Welcome back to Nokia Plaza happening tonight at LA Live. Mon Jovi, shot to the heart! You're to blame at the <laughs> Staples Center tonight. People lining up because, hey, it's their life. Why shouldn't they go? It is. It's all our age, or, you know, there's people, and, and the new folks, of course. And we're halfway there. Living on a prayer is always here. <laughs> and history taking place in Lincoln, Rhode Island, the first female professional MMA bout. And here it is. Kayleen Medeiros taking on Rachel Zazoff. I think she likes her wrestling, this one. Man, nice, nice, really nice takedowns there. Medeiros making history by winning the first female pro bout in Rhode Island. Lightweights, here it is, Charles Rosa taking on Steve McCabe. Oh, and look at this. We don't see this a lot, yet it's very effective. The Peruvian necktie. Just like that. Rosa. Oh, look up. How do you do it, boss? Break it down. Yeah, push the arm to the side, and there you really want to lock your hands together, make everything really tight. Now you need to step over the head and over the body. And if you do that, well, you can pull yourself upwards, use your core. There's a tremendous amount of power on the neck here. And uh, yeah, this is a blood show. Cuts off everything, as you can see there. Puts his own shoulder into the, into the neck, and then his forearm, what is it? His right forearm is doing the other job. And then, after Rosa the with that beautiful submission victory, it's time for the middleweights. Todd Chattel taking on John Troyer. Wow. Beautifully. That was nicely done. High mount. I love it because now if they buck up, you remember I always say just buck. But now if you buck, there's not a lot of movement. And that's why it's so effective to sit high mount to do some ground and pound. Please, Chattel guys, with listen that to this. knockout and then going for even a bigger victory on our cage access. I love you for a long time. You keep me strong and focused. When times are down, you pick me up. I love you. We marry me. Oh, oh. Congratulations, Todd. You know, and there have been other proposals here. Love, exciting and new. Jason Von Flew. We're expecting you. Brian Baker at Bellator. Always exciting and new. And then Benson Henderson, the love boat. We're <laughs> expecting you. Uh, it looks like the movie oh. Amadeus Mozart in the background, oh, you know? Just, I am so, I am you come so, in, you bow, you There's dance. just so many tears in our eyes you at this dance. moment that we must take a break. We'll take especially a break. Especially this man, because we have more news here from the kickboxing world. Glory 11 taking place outside of Chicago. Tyrone Spong, who fights everywhere, including the WSOF, will be in action again. Ron Kruk caught up with the versatile Spong, who talked about his fight plans for the rest of the year. Thanks, guys. Tyrone Spong. It was only a couple months ago when you earned your second professional MMA victory, and now it's back to kickboxing here at Glory 11. What's the biggest challenge of going from MMA back to kickboxing? Um, you know, for me, going back to kickboxing is, is uh, easier than preparing for an MMA fight, you know, because you have to adjust a lot uh, as a striker. Um, you gotta, you gotta keep in mind that uh, you can't commit to your striking completely because, uh, you know, that's when you're most vulnerable because you you might get taken down. And as a striker, you know, you wanna stand up and, and just bang it out and 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 not, you know, make it a ground fight. You have been training again in Florida with mm -hmm. the Black Zillions, with guys like Alistair Overeem and Rashad Evans. Tyron, what advice have they given you in regards to your MMA career? Uh, Rashad, Rashad helped me a lot, um, you know, with my distance and, and uh, of course, my grappling, mm. uh, my wrestling. Um, you know, uh, when I first came down to the States, uh, it was because of Rashad, me helping him out with his striking, and, right. you know, now vice versa, he's helping me out with my ground game. You've been very active in both MMA and kickboxing this yeah. year. Do you feel that you will fight again in mixed martial arts in 2013? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not, not for this year anymore. 
I might have a professional boxing fight at the end of this year. So I'm going to be an all-round combat sport athlete and very active. Well, if you can compete the same year in three different sports, your legacy is going to be cemented in the world of combat sports. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Yeah, yeah. and, and you know, um, I've... I, I heard the, the name passing by a lot, like the Bo Jackson of combat sports, and I will, you know, I feel very honored. Uh, it's a big comparison and a big, uh, a big compliment, uh, you know, towards me. Um, so, uh, you know, let's see what happens. You know, uh, I wanna, I wanna keep my fans and just fight fans in general uh, satisfied, and um, it's something that I like. I like challenges. Uh, you know, it, it's something that motivates me. Tyrone, best of luck at Glory 11. Thank you. You bet. All right, Kenny and Boss, back to you in L.A. All right, thanks, Ron. Ron's there in Chicago, by the way. You can catch him on another network tomorrow night covering Glory. Oh, look at this. Huh? Look at that. We'll do everything. Well, It's unreal. You know, Tyrone Spong is an unbelievable guy. This is going to be a great yeah, boxer because he's impressive. got all the talent in the world. Glenn Robinson's got a nice little team over there, by the way. Friday finishes now, Boss. No, I like you know Friday finishes. You know why we say that? Because it's Friday. That's the orange and another orange, they get, see? They get orange and all kinds of stuff <laughs> knocked out of them. Comes NFC out of them. 38, more great punching action. Seven seconds into the fight. There it is, Aaron Gallant. Oh, you see? Galilee That's what knocking I like. out his right, man. Right, took left, took right up again. Oh, 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 good old combination. Dang, 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 dang. Cage Warrior 60, Bantamweights, Amanda Kelly, Hannah Stevens. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty easy what you have to do. You have to block the knee all the way at the beginning. Not at the head, because it will go straight through. But Kelly, that's a lesson for next time. With the KO, Spencer Hewitt and Brian Creighton in flyweights. Yep, he's got the guillotine. He arched his shoulder backwards, and that's how you crank the neck and close the space with the hand in between. Boom. Creighton winning that. Now Bellator, let's go to action. Johnson oh. and Karos. Beautifully. Very well done. Vinicius Karos with the KO, still heavyweight tournament semifinal. Good beer, last second replacement taking on Czech Congo, making his debut in the organization. And the save counts here. You want to block the knees when they start, because at the end, they have a lot of power. Now we move on, Pancrase action in Japan. That is the craziest thing I've ever seen. That was the coolest uppercut knee. How is that? Look at that. <laughs> How Felipe. cool is that? Oliveri with one of the highest knee kicks you said you've seen. Yep. We continue on in that tournament. Kanahara taking on Pearson. Yeah. Be be again, look at this. He steps over his arm so he can't defend with that, and then he comes to it. It's called the Hisa Yodan Giri. That's a knee to the head. Dunk. Is that what Oliveri did? That's what he did. Wow. Yep. And how would you say red, red wine in Dutch? Red, rode, rode wine. We'll be right back, spinning your favorite hits right here on Inside MMA. A celebration of the grandfather of MMA and a WTF moment you have to see to believe when Inside MMA returns.